So today we are reading Shrimad Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, chapter 7, text 39 and 40. I think on the board we have verse number 39. Suradvi Sam Sri Anguptam Hausana Isya Pividyaraya Achidya Dan Mahendraya Vaishnavya Vidyaya Vibhu Suradvisham Sri Anguptam Ausanasya Pividyaya Achidya Dan Mahendraya Vaishnavya Vidyaya Vibhu Suradvisham Sri Anguptam Ausanasya Pividyaya Achidya Dan Mahendraya Vaishnavya Vidyaya Vibhu Matajis Suradve Samsri Anguptam Asanasya Vividyaya Achidya Mahendraya Vaishnavya Vidaya Vibhu Someone like to try? Suradve Samsri Anguptam Asanasya Vividyaya Suradvisam of the enemies of the demigods. Shriyam, the opulence. Guptam, protected. Hausanasya, of Sukracharya. Happy, although. Vidyaya, by the talents. Achidya, collecting. Adat, deliver. Mahindraya, unto King Indra. Vaishnavya, of Lord Vishnu. Hidyaya, by a prayer. Vibhu, the most powerful Vishwarupa. Translation by Ms. Divine Grace, Hesi Bhattivedanta Swami, Jagat Guru, Srila Prabhupada. The opulence of the demons, who are generally known as the enemies of the demigods, was protected by the talent, talent and tactic of Sukracharya. But Vishwarupa, who was most powerful, composed a protective prayer known as Narayana Kavacha. By this intelligent mantra, he took away the opulence of the demons and gave it to Mahindra, the king of heaven. Please repeat after me. The opulence of the demons, who are generally known as the enemy of the demigods, 
was protected by the talent and tactics of Sukracharya. But Vishwarupa, who was most powerful, composed a protective prayer known as Narayana Kavacha. By this intelligent mantra, he took away the opulence of the demons and gave it to Mahindra, the king of heaven. Purport. The distinction between the demigods, devas, and the demon, asuras, is that the demigods are all the body of Lord Vishnu, whereas the demons are the bodies of demigods, like Lord Shiva, Goddess Kali, and Goddess Durga. Sometimes demons are also the body of Lord Brahma. For example, Hiranyakashipu was a devotee of Lord Brahma, Ravana was a devotee of Lord Shiva, and Mahishasura was a devotee of Goddess Durga. The demigods are devotees of Lord Vishnu, Vishnu Bhakta Smito Daiva, whereas the demons, Asura Tat Vipayar Taya, are always against the Vishnu Bhaktas or Vaishnavas. To oppose the Vaishnavas, the demons become the body of Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, Kali, Durga, and so on. In the days of yore, many long years ago, there was animosity between the Devas and the Asuras, and the same spirit still continue for the devotees of Lord Shiva and Goddess Durga, always envious of the Vaishnavas who are the devotees of Lord Vishnu. The strain between the devotees of Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu has always existed. In the higher planetary system, fight between the demons and the demigods continue for a long, long time. Here we see that Vishwarupa made for the demigods a protective covering saturated with a Vishnu mantra. Sometimes the Vishnu mantra is called Vishnu Jwara. And, Lord, and the Shiva mantra is called Shiva Jwara. We find in the Shastra that sometimes the Shiva Jwara and Vishnu Jwara are employed in the fight between the demons and demigods. The word Sura Dwism, which in this verse means of the enemy of the demigod, also refers to the atheists. Srimad Bhagavatam elsewhere says that Lord Buddha appeared for the purpose of believing bewildering the demons or atheists. The Supreme Personality of God always award his benediction to devotees. The Lord himself confirmed this in the Bhagavad Gita 9.31 Kantaya Pratijani Hi Name Bhakta Pranashati O Sana Kunti declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Text 14 Jaya Gupta Sahasraksho Jivasura Kamur Vibhu Tampraha Samahendraya Vishwarupa Udaradi Vishwarupa was the most liberal, spoke to King Indra Sahasraksha, the secret hymn that protect Indra and conquered the military power of the demons. Thus end the Bhattivedanta purport of the sixth canto, seventh chapter of Srimad Bhagavadam entitled Indra offends his spiritual master Brihaspati. Om Ajnana Dimiranda Syaganjana Shalakaya Chakshirumidam Vedatas Mai Sri Gurave Namaha Namam Vishnu Badai Krishna Brishtaya Bhutale Sri Madhi Jagataka Swami Tinamine Namam Vishnu Badai Krishna Brishtaya Bhutale Sri Madhi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunya Vadi Pasatate Satarine Vancha Kalpa Karubescha Kripa Sindhu Bhyayvacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadhi Shri Gaur Bhatta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So before commencing to 
discuss this very important chapter and slogan of the Shnav Bhagavadam. I request the blessing of all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas that I may speak something which is making sense and is appealing to your devotional service. So, we are finishing this chapter, <clears throat> um, chapter 7, and we learn a great lesson from this all pastimes Indra, which offend his spiritual master, Brihaspati. We can see that sometimes people who have great opulence, for them it's very difficult to be humble. In this particular case, we say Indra is the king of heaven. He has so much wealth, opulence, facility, enjoyment, that when his spiritual master came to the assembly, he didn't even look at him. And the spiritual master, Brihaspati, understanding the mentality of Indra, he immediately left and he became offended. And so this was a big problem. Indra started to think, Oh, I commit offense against my spiritual master. And then he went and searched all over the universe. He couldn't find him. And then he was thinking, oh, when I see him, I should pay obeisance, I should touch his feet. I should do this, I should do that. But it was too late. He couldn't find him anywhere. And now the demigods are protected by the spiritual master. So he was not protected anymore. And the demons were attacking the demigods, and the demigods were defeated, they were wounded. So there is all past times about this uh, wonderful chapter about being puffed up, or not respectful, or practically Indra lost everything due to the fact that he was proud. So, this is something very, very important for us to understand. And this fight between the demons and demigods is going on all the time, everywhere. Even in the higher planetary system, people think, oh, let me go to the higher planetary system, I can enjoy life. But then you go there and there are the demons who are attacking the demigods. Even there, there is no peace. Nowhere there is peace. Everybody has a problem in this planet, that planet, everywhere. And what Krishna explained, Abrahma, Bhuvana, Loka, Purana, Avartin, Arjuna. He said, wherever you go, there is birth and death. There is suffering. Dukkalayam So even Indra has so much wealth, so much power, so much enjoyment. He is being defeated by the demons. Why? Because he become proud. I have so much. So we see in the material world that people who have a lot of wealth, a lot of facility, a lot of sense enjoyment, very difficult for them to be devotees, to become humble and to actually surrender to Krishna. Why? Because if you have so much, you have so much to lose. If you have nothing or very little, and if you have nothing, you have nothing to lose. <laughs> or if you have very little, you can be humble because, okay, I don't have so much. I depend on the mercy of the Lord. So this is very important to understand that even though the, dem the demigods, they are very, very powerful, you know, still they can be defeated by the suras. And this fight is going, Srila Prabhupada say, since long, long time since time immemorial. So this is going on in the material world. So Srila Prabhupada many times comments, he said, those people who are intelligent, they should think how to end the real problem of life. Sometimes we think, oh, I have problem, I don't have money, I don't have house, I don't have wife, I don't have children, I don't have husband, I don't have nice sari, I don't have nice dodi, I don't have this, I don't have that. But that is not the real problem. <laughs> this is the real problem. All these things can come and go. Money comes, money goes. Yes, we can obtain by somehow, by some means, some facility. Yes, Krishna is giving to everybody something. But 
The ultimate problem is birth, death, old age and disease. And we are going through this process again and again and again. 8,400,000 different species of life we have already gone through. Now we come to this human form of life. Manush Labam, this is very rare. So we must take this great opportunity uh, to actually conquer death. Srila Prabhupada said that this ISKCON is making an attempt for the people to go back home, back to God. And that ends once for all, all problem of life. Jammamrita Jaraviyadi, because all the other problems will be automatically solved. People think that I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to go to university, I have to study, I have to get a job, so many things. I'm not saying we should not do all these things. We can all do these things. But the main thing is that we should be the body of the Lord. So that in the end of our life, yam yam vapins baram bhavantajadante kale varam, we can remember the lotus feet of the Lord and we can go back to the spiritual world. So that is the real purpose of human life. Now in this particular past times we see that Indra is without spiritual master. They go to get advice from Brahma. And Brahma say, okay, you accept another spiritual master, Vishwarupa. Uh, so Vishwarupa is a great powerful Brahmana. But his father is a demigod and his mother is a demon. So he's a little bit inclined to favor the demon as well. So then what happened in the whole history of this Indra is that while he's performing this Jagya and he's giving the Kavacha, kavacha everything, he's established as the, you know, as the priest of the demigod. At one point Indra find out that Vishwarupa is chanting oblation in the fire and chanting some mantra also for, to benefit the demigods. At that point Indra becomes so upset then he chop off his head and kill him on the spot. Now what happened? He offended his spiritual master. Now he killed a Brahmana, which is pretty bad. Now one thing we should remember is that Brihaspati, who is the spiritual master, we think Sansara Dava Naradila Doga, you know, we sing every day. The spiritual master is most merciful. You know, he's our well wisher. So we ask ourselves, why? Brihaspati, they can go to Brahma, uh, to Indra and tell him, come on, don't do like this, why you disrespect me, you should be nice. No. Why? Because Brihaspati wanted to teach a really heavy lesson to Indra. He disappeared. Even though he was very merciful, the spiritual master is always very merciful. But sometimes the spiritual master is really heavy. Otherwise the disciple will not learn. Just like sometimes, sometimes the father and mother has to be very harsh to their children. To correct them, sometimes I have to spank them. I mean, my mother spanked me a lot with a spoon for cooking. <laughs> she broke many spoons on my back <laughs> because I was nonsense. I thank her for that. And, you know, sometimes beating is necessary. Sometimes. I'm not saying beating mercilessly, I'm not saying beating because of the anger or frustration, but just for correcting the children or some correcting the disciples, the spiritual master has to take a drastic measure. In this particular pastimes, you see that Brihaspati wanted to give really a heavy message by disappearing from the scene and leaving the demigod to be defeated by the demons. So that's the position of the spiritual master. So spiritual master sometimes can be very, very heavy. And the disciple should be able to accept the message of the spiritual master. We can see in Srila Prabhupada pastimes also. And in one particular pastimes with Tamal Krishna Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada was arguing with Tamal Krishna Maharaj so much, back and forth, back and forth. At one point, Tamal Krishna Maharaj said, I would rather go to China than do this. Prabhupada said, okay, tomorrow pack your bag, go to China. He said, what? I was joking. He said, you don't joke with the spiritual master. 
pack your bag. Are you serious? Yes. Tomorrow you're going to China to preach. And he was like, what did I say? Why did I say that? But then as surrender so he packed his bag and went to China and now there are so many Chinese devotees, even in Mayapur we can see because of his pioneering work and following the instruction of the spiritual master, he did it. So like that, there are many, many pastimes where the spiritual master give instruction and if you follow those instructions, we'll be successful. So, in the verse uh, 15 of this particular chapter, there is also uh, mention, Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada mentioned five disqualifications of a disciple. So, I was thinking that we should also highlight this. Well, anybody remember what are these five disqualification of the disciple anybody okay so the number one disqualification hypocrisy number two duplicity unfaithfulness disrespect and familiarity so these are the five disqualification of a disciple so disciple means discipline and disciple means we have to be very very sincere to follow the instruction of the spiritual master so what is hypocrisy? hypocrisy means that externally we do everything but inside our mind we have another project we have something else we have another program we become hypocritical huh? and what is duplicity? Duplicity means sometimes we go this way, sometimes we go that way. So we can change, we can say yes, 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 but then we do our own things, or we think something else. So hypocrisy is a continuation of fixed established program of duplicity. Duplicity is a little less. Then unfaithfulness that we start to think, oh, why my spiritual master is telling me this? He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't know my position. Maybe I made the wrong decision to accept such a spiritual master. And goes on. Then we create doubt. These doubts are like demons who eat our mind, who eat our faith, our devotion. Uh, and then we become disrespectful. We disrespect the spiritual master. We think he's an ordinary person. He's just like me. He has two arms, two legs, two eyes, one head. What's the difference? I know better. And then we become puffed up. And after that, we can become very familiar. Sometimes the spiritual master is very merciful. He relates to us in a very personal way. Uh, sometimes he embraces us, sometimes he tells us, oh, you're doing such a wonderful service. And now we start to think, oh, I am very close to him. I can do anything, I can say anything. Uh, these are all contamination which they come. So we must be uh, very, very careful in avoiding these five disqualification in relationship with the spiritual master because the spiritual master is the notion of mercy but we must be able to receive the mercy we must be the recipient of holding the mercy it says if you have a bucket and you have a hole in the bucket you can put the whole ocean inside nothing will remain so we can be devotees with the tilak with the chadar with the big seeker and all these things with the Japa Mala and we can chant Hare Krishna but if we are not able to hold the mercy of the spiritual master then everything is lost everything is gone so we must be very very careful because whatever qualification we have actually we should always think this is nothing but the mercy of the spiritual master if we are able sometimes to perform nice services, 
we are able to chant nice java we are able to come to the spiritual program we are able to be successful in whatever little attempt we are doing that is we should think this is only due to the mercy of my spiritual master which is giving me those qualifications i am like a mirror reflecting the light of the spiritual master there is a past times of ramanujacharya one of his disciples was being glorified and he was telling that's all you have to say tell me more tell me more and people thought this is funny when somebody glorify you usually you take humble position but he was telling no tell me more tell me more and then when they went and report to ramanujacharya and ramanujacharya called this is and said why are you behaving like that it's not fit to be a vaishnava are you proud of whatever qualification you have he said no guru maharaj they're glorifying me but they're not glorifying me they're glorifying you because whatever qualification i have it's only coming from you that was his explanation which was very nice so whatever little mercy we receive whatever little sadhana we are able to do whatever chanting or worshiping krishna and serving the vaishnava we can do that is only to the mercy of the spiritual master and of course ultimately this is all the mercy of Srila Prabhupada because if Srila Prabhupada would not be coming and preach in 1966 to America and make the bodies we would not be sitting here today at least not me let me speak for myself you are all great devotees surely you will be sitting in association with other Vaishnavas so the mercy of the spiritual master is very great but we shouldn't always remember that he is a representative of Krishna in fact although there are injunctions that in a temple room we don't pay obeisance or give regards to any other person but when we see our spiritual master walking in the temple we pay obeisance to him even though Krishna is there he is the representative of Krishna he is the mercy incarnation of the Supreme Personality of God. So, one must be very carefully in dealing with the spiritual master. So Indra here, if he was a little more careful, all these things would have not happened. If he would have just acknowledged him, get up from his seat, and welcome his spiritual master. But no, he didn't see him, he didn't care. Oh, just another... In Brahmana were coming to my assembly and he offended him and of course then he killed Bisharupa and due to the sin of killing a Brahmana then he distribute his sin in four different things who remember this anybody yes ocean yes or what body of water land yes land woman and tree and trees so he distributes his sin to all these things nice way of getting rid of all the sins <laughs> he distributed anyhow indra is a great devotee of the lord we should not offend him because whenever they have problem they go and pray on the ocean to Lord Vishnu and they are surrendered all the demigods are the body of the Lord but they have a little bit of materialistic affinities they have this enjoying mood or this mentality of course they are controller of different energies of the Lord there are 33 crores of demigods each one is controlling different part of this material energy on this our body is also controlled by the demigods everything is controlled by them so we offer great respect to them but then we are worshiping the supreme lord because krishna is the sarva karana karanam is the cause of all causes so just like by pouring water on the root of the tree the old tree or the old plant becomes nourished 
So similarly by worshipping Krishna, his lotus feet, all the demigods and all the living entities in the universe become pleased. So this is a very nice teaching we can learn from this chapter of King Indra of family Brihaspati. And understanding also the exalted position of the spiritual master. Because without understanding that, there is very little progress we can actually do in our spiritual life. So, Sadhu Sangha is very powerful. Srila Prabhupada many times he explained that the devotee can be always in association with other devotee and they will be protected by that environment. So that is the great assets we have here in Mayapur. Sometimes we travel around the world, we go to some temple, there are only a few devotees, few Madhajis, one Madhaji in charge of all the pujari and cooking, struggling all day with few devotees, everybody is going out. But here in Mayapur we have thousands of devotees. So we have very great opportunity to associate with devotees, with great respect, uh, with great humility, we can associate with devotees and serve them. Krishna say, Name Bhakta Pranashati, my devotee will never perish. So if we remain in the Sadhu Sangha, this is the most powerful thing to remain devotees. Otherwise, the material world is like a big churning machine. It can churn us and spit us out. We go out there in the material world, <coughs> energy of Maya is very powerful. Yeah. No one can become free from the three modes of material nature. So Krishna is there in the form of time. And sometimes we look at our watch, we see what is the time. It's 8.37. So Krishna is the unsurmountable time which takes away everything. Time I am the destroyer of the whole world, the whole universe. So for those people who do not believe in Krishna, then Krishna comes in the form of time. Okay, my dear sir, your time is up. Go out of your body. No, but I have something to do. I'll pay one million dollars to the doctor. The doctor will take the money and say, yeah, we'll try. <laughs> and then the person loses his body and his money also. Most of the people, they lose all their money which they earn in their life in the hospitals. <laughs> or in medicines. Some medicines are very expensive. We have new cure for cancer. It costs only one lakh rupees for pills. So when you are sick and you are in the dead bed, then you'll pay anything. You'll do anything. Right? To get free from the disease. But that will not help us. The only thing which can help us, Vishnu Smaranam Krishna, remembering the lotus suite of Krishna. If we remember the lotus suite of Krishna, then no problem. We are not this body. This body is a machine created by the material energy. And sooner or later we have to go. We all have to go. So we can live in a very Krishna conscious way. We can perfect our life by serving the Vaishnavas, the spiritual master and Krishna. And we can become very happy in this life itself. We can see all the devotees are always very bright. Srila Prabhupada had an interview with a, I think he was a priest or somebody who was a Christian. He says, Swamiji, I want to ask you a question. Why when I see your disciples, they're all very bright. Before they were not interested in the church, they were not interested in God. But you came and you changed their life and now they look so bright. Shri Prabhupada said, yes, that's the power of the Lord. They are chanting the holy name of the Lord. They are in contact with Krishna. They are preaching Krishna consciousness. So, that is the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is to distribute this mercy to everyone. 
পৃথিবীতে আছে যত গ্রাম সো ই সাই দ্যাট উই শুড গো এন ইভরি টাউন এন্ড ভিলেজ এন্ড দিস শুড বি দিস নলেজ উই হ্যাভ টু অবেক এন পিপল প্লিজ মাই ডিয়ার সর ইউ আর সো ওয়ান্ডারফুল প্লিজ টেক দিস মা মন্ত্র প্লিজ টেক দিস বুকস দিস ক্যান চেঞ্জ ইউর লাইফ ইউ ক্যান বিকাম হ্যাপি ইউ ক্যান গো ব্যাক হোম ব্যাক টু গড and you can end once and for all all the suffering of this material world so that is our job we have a job here not only becoming the bodies but making other people the bodies make them everybody happy in this material world and shila prabhat was asked what happen if in this planet everybody become a devotee he said become vaikuntha <laughs> vaikuntha means no problem Yeah. No anxiety. They said at the time when Ramachandra was pleasant, present in this planet, even people could choose not to die. There was nobody suffering. Why? Due to the presence of the Lord. So of course now we are in Kali Yuga. Kalar dosa ni dera janna stiego maaguna Kirtana deva krishna sya mukta sangha paramraji people of kali yuga that are afflicted afflicted by so many problem our jananti man muda people become like donkeys yes they working very hard but they have no gain because in the end they will lose everything so we had to distribute this mercy which will make their life successful so please do keep always in your heart the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is called mahavada naya most merciful incarnation of the supreme personality of god and lord nityananda is even more merciful than chaitanya mahaprabhu he even liberate jagaya madai who hurt him so we must distribute this mercy to everyone then only we will receive the mercy ourselves from shila prabhupad from the acharyas and from krishna so we will become empowered to distribute this mercy not because of our qualification but the qualification of the previous acharya and the spiritual master then we can all go back home back to god okay i will stop here thank you very much it's almost time for if there is any question or any comment anything there are great devotees here mark prabhu is there paridya prabhu yes prabhu hi krishna <coughs> thank you bhaji bhaji my question is that as we do devotional service the material suffering reduces and the material suffering reduces and we become complacent in devotional service then how we can maintain our enthusiasm because because someone becoming devotee is automatically the suffering modes of materialism effect is reducing so in that sense we become high influence also devotee respect also in that sense no one is there to rectify and we become complacent is very dangerous situation so how we can overcome actually it? we all have to work under somebody no one should be independently working performing devotional service we all have to have some authority behind us yes and that person should check us how we are performing see if you go to big company whatever position you have you always have a hierarchy somebody is on top of you checking how much time you come to work when you leave what your performance is how much is the result so similarly we should be like that we should have somebody who is our superior if not the spiritual master is not present with us we can choose some senior devotee and say prabhu i want you to be my shelter my guide on behalf of my spiritual master and doing this service please check on me see that i'm doing good i'm doing well if i you see that i'm doing something wrong please correct me so in that way we are protected because to be free is like to be a street dog there are so many dog in the street people throw stone people giving them some biscuit sometimes you get beaten sometimes you get biscuit so it's not very good for us but if we work in 
format where we are all under some authority. So they check on us and they tell us, okay, do this now, do this now. Because it's a gradual elevation to pure devotional service. So those who are more advanced than us, they can see they have done already the same process. So they can tell us, okay, you are here, you have to reach here. But in between, be careful not to get sidetracked, not to be distracted, not to offend the devotees, take only Krishna Prashadam, sleep on time, read proper books. The whole program is all designed there. So we cannot make a mistake. Unless we have a strong desire in our heart that we become duplicitous. We spoke about the five different bad qualities of a disciple. We should give up those bad qualities. We should be very sincere, very honest, and ready to be humble to take the instruction of the superiors. Because by doing that, we are always protected. If somebody comes to you and say, Oh, why are you doing this? And you say, Oh, Prabhu is guiding me. If you have any problem, please speak to him. No, no problem. Right? Does this answer your question? That way we are safe. But if you are alone, do it. Today I will do the puja for Krishna. Tomorrow I'll clean the floor. The after tomorrow, I'm tired, I do nothing. Just let me sleep all day. Then there's no consistency there. Srila Prabhupada wants we come every day in Mongolarti. We chant every day our Japa. We do the same program for everybody. In that there is sense is a science of self realization. Now it's slowly we become purified. Sometimes we should not be impatient. Oh I am doing so much. Why Krishna is not giving me mercy? Why the devotees are not merciful to me? What type of mercy we want? You are in association with the body. We are there. We are all performing the same devotional service. So by that association we can be protected. Any other question? Yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Uh, this is a, a little technical question related to third canto Srimad Bhagavatam where there is a description of creation, how the senses evolve from the universal form. It's you know, three factors mentioned there. And the uh, desire to see uh, when the, the universal form uh, develops desire to see, then appears the demigod of the I guess uh, Surya Dev, and uh, along with this, the sense, the power of to see our eyes, and the same way all other senses. So, and the demigods are in control of our senses. So, and it's include also senses of demons, I guess. Uh, senses, senses of demon. Senses of all creatures. So now, when the my question, when the demigo, uh, when the demons attack the demigods. So Indra being in control of the hands, so could he just uh, retain this function of the hands um, and like prevent the demons from attack? So the, my question is, how much really uh, the demigods in control of uh, everything, and and how much they are themselves in control of uh, um, who, whoever? See, we are all under the three modes of material nature. It's very systematic how things work, because Krishna, by one action, performs many millions of actions. So, by these demigods being in charge of different situations, even when some demigods is not, this, these are opposition, is not available in the form of living entity, then Krishna takes that position, because the whole machinery has to go on. Yes? Just sometime in the airplane there you see the pilot coming out. Who is driving the airplane? There is automatic pilot. <laughs> so Krishna has a plan to make the whole system work. It's very intricate for us to understand, but we know that it works. Just like sometimes we drive in a big city, there is light, red light, there is this. We don't see who is designing all the city, the traffic, where the people cross the road, but there is some intelligence, superior intelligence. It's there. We don't see it. So we cannot see how the demigods are controlling us through the planet influence, through the three modes of material nature. But all these things work. And even if the demigods have been defeated, still everything goes on. 
because that is the design, perfect design of Krishna. Ishwara, he is Krishna is the supreme controller. So he's not, of course in some time, there is some past times that the sun goes away and everything becomes dark. And then you cannot see anything, right? But Krishna is always protecting us. So Krishna is protecting the living entity. Krishna is protecting our body. Just like we are, speak, we are reading about Narayan Kavacha. But every day the devotee put mantras into our body. On Kesavayanam, on Narayanam, on Madhavayanam, on Govindayanam, and so on. We are protecting this body as the temple of the Lord. So Krishna is protecting our body. So Krishna somehow is making everything work. Even if demigods have been defeated, even they have no power, still they retain the position to manage the universe. So that's how it works. It's not very easy to understand how it works. Just like if I bring you one engine of, uh, you know, Tata Sumo engine and say, okay, you repair this. Maybe you have no knowledge, but somebody who is a mechanic, you can open the whole engine in parts and put it back together. So this is subtle energy, how it works, by the desire of the demigods, things fall in place. Just like a powerful person, you know, let's say the king or the head of the state or the head of the country, if he has a desire to do something, he has the power to do that. He empower other people, he empower the government, he make laws, he make constitution, he called the police and make sure. Just like the Prime Minister now in India is decided that in different parts of India there should not be slaughter of cows. So how is he going to enforce that? Is he enforcing? If they find somebody who is slaughtering cows, then he goes for ten years in jail and he has to pay, I don't know, five lakh rupees fine. So when people have been punished, then people become afraid and do not perform certain activities. So similarly, by the power of Krishna, the sun and the moon and the planet, the moves and they are in orbit. But fear, Krishna is maintaining everything. That's the explanation we have from the Shastra. We cannot speculate. But if you have a great desire to understand that, Krishna will reveal to you in your heart. Because Krishna is in your heart, Krishna can reveal everything to you. So sometimes you pray to Krishna, please let me understand how this gigantic manifestation work, then Krishna can make us understand. Does this answer your question? Mataji side, any other question? Anything you cannot sleep in the night? No, everybody can sleep nice and it's a little hot. Yes, but this is done to approve. Hare Krishna. I just read that Jabataka Maharaj has flown to Delhi Hospital. Yes. Do you have an update on that? How's he? What's yeah, they condition? said that he's getting better. He has gone to the hospital. He's getting better, so he's recuperating his health. You know, he's, there was some problem with oxygen in the lungs and things like that. So they took him back to the original hospital in Delhi where they were treating him for liver, and the doctor they're giving treatment, so he's getting better day by day. We pray that you'll become all right and come back very soon to Mayapur amongst us. Thank you for reminding me. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda ki, Gaura Premanande, Arivo.